Dakin, president of the Chautauqua Dance Circle. I am honored today to be interviewing Patricia McBride, American ballerina extraordinaire, master ballet teacher at Chautauqua Institution School of Dance, associate artistic director of the Charlotte Ballet, and a 2014 Kennedy Center honoree, chosen by President Obama for this exceptional honor. We have been so fortunate to have had her presence at Chautauqua for many years as a dancer, master teacher, and stager of Balanchine Ballets. Patricia and I will be discussing her life in dance with a focus on her huge impact on dance at Chautauqua. So let's begin. I have an article from the Winter Chautauqua dated March 1973 titled, Stars of the New York City Ballet to Dance at Chautauqua Santa Theater. In that article, you, Patricia, were described as follows, with a quote from the Harper's Magazine authored by Arlene Croset. Quote, at this moment, Balanchine has possibly the finest company he's ever had. In Patricia McBride, he has the outstanding American ballerina of our day. McBride always has presence, now she has authority too. It's the mark of a true ballerina. She's merely the most exciting ballerina in America today. It's amazing. Please tell us about that very first time you came to Chautauqua to dance with Jean-Pierre. That article introduced you to oh. the Chautauqua uh, community, and you have lived up to that reputation. So, well, you have told me it was, it was a remarkable experience, so share it. It was, and thank you for those kind words. That was so beautiful. I was really touched by that. Um, we, you know, it all started because of Mary Schnee. Mary Schnee was in the Chautauqua Symphony Orchestra, and he was in the New York City Ballet Orchestra. But he always spent his summers here in, the, in Chautauqua. And he came to me one day, and my Jean-Pierre also, and he said, you know, we've never had a professional dance, dancers here, I believe. And uh, he said, I'd love you and, and Jean-Pierre to come and do, do ballets. So our conductor was Robert Irving, and he invited, he was the start of it all, actually, of dance here in Chautauqua, professional dance in Chautauqua. So we came and we were blown away by the, the, just the excitement, the people. I remember they had made the stage beautifully clean. It was shining, it was sparkling. And it was the most slippery stage I had ever danced on. And we said, how are we gonna do this? We put Coca-Cola on the stage. I asked violinists for rosin from their bows to make, to put on my porches. And also I had special shoes for concerts, it, just in case the stage was slippery. But in those days, we always usually danced on linoleum that was put down a special stage, or the stages were specially treated. Well, it was the slipperiest stage, so we, we delayed, it must have been a half an hour, washing the floor, putting Coca-Cola, that was a trick when, you know, dancers needed a, a good floor. A little bit of Coca-Cola made it a little sticky, and but it was it was the slippers. But anyway, the program got on. Um, it was a huge audience. Robert conducted. Robert Irving conducted. He was one of the greatest condu ballet conductors in the world, and we were so lucky. He conducted. Mary Schnee was at, at his violin playing all, and we did four pas de deux, and the orchestra d would do an interlude. We had, you know, the back where the organ is, all those, all those seats in the back, everything was packed. The seats, and so we were kind of dancing in the round because I remember bowing and, and bowing at the audience and it was such a warm, loving, extraordinary experience and performance. And after the show, I remember the next morning, Jean-Pierre and I, hand in hand, went, took a walk on the lake, and we fell in love. We just said, we have got to get back here. This is such a magical place. And we never knew about Chautauqua, ever. There was, an, I guess we just, just weren't aware of what was going on. We, we stayed at the Wensley house. We had Winnie, who was 
just what well, she took care of the, the Wensley house and they, that's where they put all the guest stars who came many many great lecturers came and musicians singers I guess we were maybe the, one of the first professional dancers that came that we said and we said oh this is like magic this is a magical place and so in the backs of my mind uh, John Pierre actually said we've got to come back so years later he said, well, I think, you know, he'll, he talked to the president at the time was President Hess. And John Pierre put a group together with students from the School of American Valley, Mr. Balanchine School. He rehearsed them. And he brought them for a performance, which I was dancing at the time in New York. And I came, Jean Pierre had retired actually in 1980. So he, I guess it was before that that he brought a company of students. And the uh, president was over, he was, I think he was so impressed, he was rather overwhelmed at the, uh, how extraordinary the students doing many ballets and Balanchine, they brought the Who Cares of Balanchine students dancing it. Um, he had a ballet that went on it. He did a sort of mixed program and the audience was wonderful. We brought the costumes from New York from the New York City Ballet that they could wear and um, and it was a big success and then years later I, I think uh, he was asked to start to be the director of the summer, summer school so Chautauqua has always been dear to our heart we just look so look forward to it our, our children grew up here Jean-Pierre and I and um, we stayed actually in a little place we we originally we were in the boys club and because the boys uh, somehow they weren't using it for several years and John Pierre had a little apartment and because uh, I was in New York with the New York City Ballet and we would go to Saratoga Springs and I'd be dancing in July and but John Pierre started this really over on his own and he brought in Violette Verdi and Helgi Thomason as guest teachers, I think he had a ballet mistress, I think it was Bonnie Bourne, who was a dancer in the New York City Ballet. And they, they made uh, mirrors and they put bars up in the boys club and they had several little places that they could do classes. It wasn't like the beautiful studios that we have now. But I felt, oh, I felt so bad, I, I would see Jean-Pierre with that, what is it, the radio flyer, the little cart that you, you know, the little wagon that you pull. He had a tape recorder there and he was going from studio to studio and, and he made this place what it is today. I mean, um, he was the one, he was a visionary, Jean-Pierre. And he said, I feel a part of students' education, they're part of their teaching, it has to go a step beyond that because there's a step of the performance uh, process that makes it, and if dancers haven't had that experience, you know, they can't just go from the school into a company. They have to have the ex experience of performing. So he, you know, talked to the president and talked to all the, the people who, they had a wonderful staff here. Uh, he had a wonderful secretary, uh, an assistant, who just, helped so much and uh, she was a part of working this out and all the people in the past were such a big help Dick Reddington and um, it was so extraordinary but so the, at work then uh, the students what he would during their courses and people always thought oh it's just a performing place you only do a quick class and you rehearse all day. It's really important, Jean-Pierre felt, that he would give the students as many classes as they, they can here. They'd be doing at least four classes, plus rehearsing for the, the finale was our this performance. Uh, and, and dancers really learn even more from learning ballets because if they want to be a professional dancer, they have to learn how to to uh, assimilate, to get the choreography, whatever you know you have to do, and you have to be quick about it. 
And so it is part of their education and it's it was he started no other summer courses had that. But he felt that that was, you know, important for their for their uh, the learning process to be a professional. It's the next step. Mm -hmm. He was so right and it we've done it every year and and uh, a lot of the dancers love to come here because of that. Now other schools are doing it, but he was so ahead of his time. And uh, it, it's worked and it's become one of the most prestigious, well-loved uh, dance programs in America. Can you tell us a little bit more about how your, uh, how your position here evolved as you have changed positions from the New York City Ballet to Indiana University and, and so on. So yes. uh, your, your role here has evolved. Yes, well, I came first as a dancer and um, then I, I, I even came once because someone, one of the dancers injured themselves and they were doing movies. <laughs> so I did, I came and, and, you know, danced it with, uh, I think, uh, Bill Stoller was, was doing it. And we rehearsed and it was just kind of, oh, I'll do it, sure. It was, it was a lot of fun, but I, I've always loved coming and the transition I was very nervous because I did with the New York City Ballet I was there 13 uh, 30 years I was 16 till 46 and then when I retired from there we went to Indiana because Jean Pierre was there I joined my my two our two children uh, we joined Jean Pierre in Bloomington Indiana at the University and that's where I started teaching I would teach a few master classes, but not on a regular basis. And I started staging ballets, the Balanchine Ballets, which is so dear to my heart. It's, it's an extraordinary thing to be able to do. It's given my life such meaning and joy. And, um, but I started doing that in Indiana. So when I left the New York City Ballet in 1988, 89, then I came here. We would spend our summers here. I joined Jean Pierre, and um, it was. And we always would come. Actually, after my work was finished, I remember. I think Chris was uh, like a year old, and or 14 months old, and Melanie was three years old when we came the first time. And so we would come, and I would I would watch. Maybe I perhaps I taught class or would rehearse a little bit if it was something that was on that I was familiar with. But I started actually uh, being here in 1989 on the faculty, and I loved it. And I, I saw, when I think of the hundreds of beautiful dancers I've seen who have done so well who have come here to Chautauqua, it's astounding. Um, and I love working, showing them the balancing. Staging balancing is pure heaven for me. I just love it. And discovering his ballet as a whole, doing the corps de ballet, but staging the ballet of a Balanchine was such a joy. It was so meaningful to me to be able to pass on all of his extraordinary ballets. And it's so wonderful that the dancers get a chance to, to perform these ballets as well. And um, I've seen so many extraordinary, you can tell at a very young age if, if a student has a talent. And you, you could, you, there's a spark, there's a special spark, a God-given talent that they have. And you want to be able to, you know, expose them. They come from all different schools, you know, the training is different. A lot of the teachers are wonderful who, have, who send their dancers to our program. And they go back really improved. We hear from a lot of the, the teachers where we said, oh, they improved so much over the summer. You know, and they had a wonderful summer, and um, and also we've had a lot, lots of students who have come from Mr. Balanchine School, who I have such an affinity with, uh, and to be able to have shared what I know, and they go back, and they become professionals, and a lot of them who've been here have joined the New York City Ballet, so it's a special uh, joy. But I'm I. I feel um, so honored. I, I love each and every student for the, the commitment, the discipline, 
the beauty, the hard work that they do, and the passion and the love. It's very exciting to teach. And each and every student has something special to offer. And um, I, it's, I always feel as a teacher you want to give them what you've learned your whole life, you know, in a short amount of, of time. And um, it's so rewarding to see the growth from the, when I start staging a Balanchine Ballet to the end, the process at the end, the confidence that they get. You know, maybe in the beginning it's hard for them because they've not, not had that musicality or the speed or the, um, the connecting of the steps in a way, the movement quality that it, it requires. And to see that, and I've seen such talented, it's such a joy to work with such talented dancers also, you know. know the program is very competitive to be accepted it is, it's yes. Well, we have, you know, in the beginning, Jean-Pierre did all of the, he would go from city to city and writing everything down and he was very meticulous and he has a good eye for talent. So his standards are very, very high. You know, a lot of the established, I mean, they, nobody knew what Chautauqua was like. So, you know, for, for people to come here, for dancer students, who came here for the first time, it wasn't easy for him to get people in the beginning till it has a reputation now. And you know, dancers go back, they tell their schools, they tell their friends, and that's how it, it bit by bit, slowly by slowly, word of mouth, and what an incredible safe environment it is, how great our teachers we had. He assembled a marvelous faculty. You know, Maris Battaglia has been here from the beginning. And you know how he found Maris? No. Uh, really interesting because he had students who were coming here before Matt Maris started teaching here. He had students and he saw the quality of the students. And he said, wow, her students are the best because she comes from Buffalo, which is very close to here. So it was easy for her students to come here. And so, so he called her one day and he said, you know, I'd, I'd like you to come and teach. And it's been a beautiful, um, um, relationship. beautiful relationship over the years and I think Marcus Bugler was here from the Metropolitan Opera was one of the first people and his friend was Mark Diamond and he brought in Mark to, to teach. Jean-Pierre invited Mark and he invited Mark to do a ballet and liked his work and he thought it was a very different uh, choreography than what the Balanchine or the classics. It was a different voice. Mm -hmm. So he brought Mark in, and then Kathy came, and we had wonderful teachers who have come over the years, and we had a few guests, like Violette came every year, and she was such an inspiring teacher, a wonderful teacher, who everyone was just loved. And we've had amazing guest teachers, and I started teaching here, and um, Sandy Jennings came in the beginning, and wonderful, wonderful. I don't want to forget anyone because each and every person, they're all important and made to talk about what it is. Yeah. History. Um, Have you worked with the festival dancers and the apprentice dancers? or do you, I mean, Yes, I teach all the, all levels. All the I, levels. I work so with the, the festival and I, I teach uh, two times a week the, uh, the workshop, which is the young ones, uh -huh. the, little, the young ones, very talented young ones. And that's an, also, Jean-Pierre added that on. His, he started by doing the older girls, the older. And what's wonderful is we have a wonderful staff here, but also we have the Bellinger Hall where they eat. The dorms are a walk, it's right across the street. And uh, they can, they're, they have uh, counseling and they, they're, you know, they're looked after really beautifully. They have their three meals there, and they have freedom. They bring their bikes, and they do. But after many, many years, he said, I think we can bring a, you know, start with the younger. I said, how are you going to do that? Is there enough, are there enough people? I mean, they're like 10, 12-year-olds, 13, 14-year-olds, and then they like to go from that into the older, the older, more advanced class, the most advanced class. I think it's wonderful that you have exposure to the students 
it's for such a wide range of age and, and uh, level yes. that they don't confine your teaching to the oldest uh, pre-professional students. That yes. Really, all the students are exposed to your teaching, and I, I know I've interviewed these students, and and they just said it was wonderful having your presence. Yes, I normally don't teach that age. I did for when I first started in Charlotte. I loved to start with the, the young ones. I had 10 year olds in Charlotte. And then as the work, I started not. And I, then I, 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 every once in a while, I will teach the a lower class, like once a week in Charlotte. Here I, I teach uh, the workshop and the, the festival. and. Uh, it's wonderful, and we have all our teachers are so special, and Maris has been, you know, such an important part of this uh, process, and Mark Diamond, and also Sasha James, who Jean-Pierre brought, brought in to do cho the choreography, even on the students sometimes, but they're very busy with our Charlotte Ballet performances also, and I'm also busy because I stage the balancing for the for the Charlotte Ballet that's in residence. Your uh, valuable presence with the Balanchine Trust and how beneficial that is to the Chautauqua community. Yes. Because we uh, are able to see these wonderful performances that really are limited because of the Balanchine Trust. So could you explain that, please? Well, the Balanchine Trust has been extraordinary to Jean-Pierre and I. They, they really, I don't know, they're, they have let us, let me do whatever I ask for usually. And it's a blessing and they, they don't charge a lot of money. It's family, it's family. And I guess they know I will do a good job because that's, my goal is, is to teach in a positive way what Balanchine's ballets are about and to pass on as accurately as I can to the dancers to help them understand the musicality and the speed and the dynamics of what George Balanchine's choreography is. And it also brings the st dancers a step, it teaches them, they improve by doing Balanchine. That's so wonderful because it's challenging and it brings their technique up a notch by doing Balanchine. Everyone knows this, and it's, it's such beautiful, doing masterpieces are, are so amazing. We also have, now our present day, Mark Diamond does the ballet, and we have Michael Burnin here, who's also a wonderful teacher. He teaches our, all of our divisions, I believe, and our Mark Diamond also. We have Glenda also here uh, teaching wonderful classes, and Maris. Uh, one, and then we have some guest teachers in. So we have a, I hope I didn't forget anyone. I don't want to forget anyone. Um, but it's, it's, it's um, you know, and then you see they, they, they are not only not doing one ballet, they are doing a ballet by Mark Diamond, which is very different from the George Balanchine. Michael Vernon does a piece. Or we'll have a guest, uh, we also have a modern teacher coming and teaching modern and jazz. So, and they do character, the young, the young ones. So we have fantastic faculty. Rachel comes from Maris' school, and we have just the best. It's, it's a city that makes it. It's not only my presence, it's everyone who's made to talk with what it is. And John Beer teaches also, which is, he doesn't have a lot of time for it, but he t likes to teach the boys' class. We also, he said that he started this boys' class, and that is a step forward. He always has ideas that go forward. He doesn't go back, and it's very popular. We have 10, 11, 12-year-olds having an all-boys class, and then there's an, uh, the festival also. Several times a week, they have a men's, uh, the men's class. Plus, they have partnering classes for the, the uh, older boys have a partnering class, which is very important, a pas de deux class. And so it's, it's, it's very rewarding. 
we have a new group of students coming and it's always so exciting to see the talent that's coming you know and uh, you know getting to know one another and and at the end everyone cries at the end because they're so sad leaving and they've made these wonderful connections with each other and they talk about their schools together and you know the technique is the different schools are, are uh, a little different what the focus is on from school to school but um, it's a wonderful to see how they learn from each other it's not only the teachers who they learn from you know they can see if there's one dancer is maybe more technical they can learn from the dancer in the class that's how they're exposed the exposure to different dancers not only the dancers from their existing schools you know, and that's a, and it's such a joy to see dancers who come back to see the progress over the years, you know, to see them come back and to see them become professionals is such a joy. I was so excited to read an article that was in. Was that the New Yorker? The, excuse article? me, the New Yorker. Was that the New Yorker? Uh, yeah, the New Yorker well, I just magazine. did that. Um, yeah. Which was very recent. And it was um, about your coaching Lauren Lovett and Daniel Obert from the New York City Ballet uh, as part of the Balanchine Trust. And they were both students here at Chautauqua. That's right. So That's I right. see the connection between the professional student that you are still coaching and the Balanchine Trust videotaping uh, now uh, Balanchine ballets and students from Chautauqua are, are in those ballets I know. to be the example for others. I and know. would you talk more about the videotaping project at the Balanchine Trust? Oh, because yes. that to me is, it really involves many Chautauqua students. Yes, that's true. Well, you know, I, it's, it's, you know, Daniel, uh, the found, it's the Balanchine Foundation. Oh, Nancy yeah. Reynolds actually started it years ago. It was her idea because she felt that there wasn't uh, the connection of, for the archives to see how the ballets were first created, the idea. So she brought in the people who created the roles of all the Balanchine ballets. So I had kind of resisted for a long time. <laughs> and I guess it's my bucket list now. <laughs> you know, I feel at a certain age, I'll be 75 this year. And I feel that it's something that I feel is important and I would like to have it, you know, to show that. And so I called Nancy, I said, yes, I'd like to come. So she was delighted and I'm hoping I'll do many more of, of these projects. But to have Lauren and, and Daniel Ulrich is such a dream because Daniel was 13 when he came. Lauren was 17. You could, it was evident their talent. And I, I, I remember teaching Daniel Tarantella, but he was like a little, little, little boy, which he also, when he joined the New York City Ballet, he danced Tarantella. He still is dancing Tarantella. And Lauren, I, I taught her Tarantella and First Movement Western Symphony. And to see her, and she was so beautiful and so lovely. So I was very excited to, to be able to work with them on this, uh, the foundation, the archives. So we worked and it was wonderful because, you know, uh, things do change over the years. I, I know sometimes I've seen videos. I've seen it on televised and it is different than the way I danced it. I do not want to change who they are. They, they cannot be a carbon copy of me and the way I danced it. I want them to be themselves first because that was, Balanchine never really told me how he wanted me, you know. He danced it and I copied him and he, it was done really quickly and then I was, had to remember the steps and I was the, um, what do you say? I had to keep the steps within me all those years. And I remembered what he said and I wanted to pass on what he said. But about my personality, the, I always thought the music speaks for itself. But to pass it on, and Lauren even choreographed a ballet here, which was beautiful, Lauren, as a student. And she was an apprentice, actually. She was an apprentice student. And um, 
she got to choreograph here, and now she's choreographing in, the, in New York. And I, it's such a pride, I have such a pride in them because they were such beautiful students, nice, and that's why a giving and uh, very special, they were special. You knew the talent. And I was so happy when she got, I keep track, I said, oh, she's in the New York City Valley. I was so happy about this. And, um, and Daniel has come back and taught at our school and everyone is so excited that Daniel Ulrich is teaching and he brought Lauren with him and, and she was, you know, would take class with the dancers and uh, they're so giving. You have to give as a dancer because you've, you've been given so much at my stage, you know, giving is part of your job as a teacher. You have to give back in a positive way with joy and, and, and love. Back and to Chautauqua because we got to see movies. Oh, and that was so great last because summer. I used all of our students which, last which year. Awesome. Uh, our and students were the core oh, with our dancers, so and they were what they did such a great job. I started because it was. The musicality, Stravinsky, is a difficult ballet, and it was a ballet like no other ballet for them. They had, they had to be exact on the count. And uh, it was a wonderful learning progress, and they got to dance with our company. And because our, our company, uh, we don't have the whole company, we, we had half of our company here, so it was impossible. So that is also a great joy for the students to get that. And they loved it at the end. They, they got such confidence in the end. You know, and to do it with a, an orchestra, we rehearse them with a tape recording of an orchestra, but it's very different. And the, the end result, I was so proud of them at the end because they really had to listen. I, I tried to prepare them saying, it's not gonna be the same. So you have to li really listen. And it's such a joy. I've staged so many Balanchine ballets, and Ruby's is is complicated to stage. And you know, I the role was made created on myself and Edward Valella. So it was a great joy to impart that. Uh, I've done so many serenade. I've staged, and they're always such a joy. And um, I, I I never was in the core. I was in the core for one year. <laughs> So I, you know, I never, and uh, you know, when you dance, you're kind of oblivious because you have your work to do as a, as a, um, you know, ballerina starring in, in all of these ballets. And so when I started, I was so insecure when I started. I thought, how am I ever going? Hours and hours I would spend on videos, and I wouldn't because I knew my role. But I've staged many ballets that I have never danced before. So I, I would get like three or four about. Uh, videos and I'd be studying hours, spending hours and hours. That's how you do it. You learn from videos, the corps de ballet. And the course sometimes is very complex. So my love of Balanchine's ballets was even more when I saw the intricacies of how he did it. I have no idea. It was, he's a genius. Of course, we know he's a genius. I knew he was a genius as a dancer working with him. And he was in my life, he was my father figure, and he would come in the studio and my name would go on the board rehearsing for a new ballet, and of course I was so excited, you know, and, and he was so humble and never raised his voice, gave me trust. He was such a great role model for, for me to see. He never criticized or said anything negative. He just danced for me, he would partner me, and he trusted me, and um, and, and that's what I've tried. To, and what a joy! <laughs> it's, it's, I've always said it's, it's a better gift to be given a beautiful ballet, mm -hmm. and to work with Balanchine than Mr. Balanchine, Mr. B, as we called him, than getting jewelry or diamonds or, you know, it was the the greatest gift. And I was always nervous because I wanted to please him, and I wanted to make him proud of me. Because I was 16 and he choreographed his first work on me when I was 17, 18. I did Midsummer, Hermia, and Tarantella was done very early, everything. And uh, he made me the dancer I am because of all the ballets he choreographed and 
the rep, I had a huge rep. I had maybe 100 ballets. At the, I counted them one day because everyone said, well, how many ballets? I said, I don't know how many ballets. I did a lot of ballets. One day I sat down and wrote every ballet and every role I danced, and it came to about 100 or more than 100. And it, you know, so, and so I had, and so every ballet, and I always had a large repertoire, which was very diverse. Balanchine was always the man, because I was 16, I was, a, I was a teenager, and he took me under his wing, and he taught us classes, and the classes actually, you learned how to dance the Balanchine ballets through his classes. How to do a glissade, how to, how to do everything. How, and he wanted a pommel, beautiful arms, alive fingers, and so you feel alive from the tips of your fingers, to the tip of your toes, using your whole body to dance, being expressive, musical, energy, um, and slow, the slow of the slowest movement to fill out everything. But he was such a role model when I later began teaching. All of his, his method was there, you know, um, and I would pass it on, Possi maybe not to the extreme that he, he did, but to, to the essence of what he was and his, the ballets that I learned. And they shaped me as a dancer. And um, I was so blessed to be able to have that as my background. And also, I, I would get to also work with Jerome Robbins, who was extraordinary and very different from Balanchine. So I learned these two different styles. And to be able to doing a, a Robbins ballet one night, or Jerome Robbins another, our ba George Balanchine ballet, what a extraordinary, you know, my background. And I was very lucky because I, when we weren't performing, we we had long seasons. I remember three month seasons dancing every night. We'd have one day off, eight performances a week, matinee Saturday, Sunday. Um, for long men, then we'd, we'd tour, and, but when we weren't working, I would get a lot of, uh, in the beginning of my career, I had Edward Villella, was my extraordinary partner. When I was 17, I started dancing, and he would always get contract. I never had an agent in the beginning, but he would invite me to do guesting. So I would do guesting all over. We did a lot of television, and had a lot of experience dancing on cement floors for television, live performances where I'd wear my rubber shoes with Edward Lella, and he brought me all over America dancing, so I always danced a lot. But, and then later on, I, I would guest appear, and I would get to do a full-length Sleeping Beauty with Jean-Pierre, a full-length Giselle, which I got to do Giselle, and which I just loved, and it was, so I had never done, a, I had done, um, uh, Mr. Balanchine brought back Coppelia for me with Helgi Thomason as my partner and Madame Danilova staged it and Balanchine did a whole new third act. He did a new pas de in the third act and he did the wheat dance in the first act. But to see George Balanchine and Alexandra Danilova staging this was so extraordinary. And I got to do the lead, and I was very nervous, because I had never, he had done a Harlequinade, which was a two-act ballet, which was a classical Commedia dell'arte, a two-act with Ed Edward Villella, and I was Columbine, and it was a story ballet, wonderful, he did wonderful potages and solos, but I had never had really the responsibility of doing a three-act ballet in 1973, actually. the guiding spirit of who I was as a dancer and he formed me also as a teacher. But all these other things made me the teacher I am today. You and know, you doing all of that. Of that. And I feel so lucky as to be able to do, to still at my age, to still be able to teach and to be able to pass on the tradition, the, the balancing tradition. and. I've worked a lot. Actually, we did a Sleeping Beauty with Jean-Pierre, and I uh, did a full-length Sleeping Beauty for our company, which was so beautiful. And it was a gift to be able to do all those, pass on all the solos, because 
The link between Balanchine was Petipa. Balanchine at the Marinsky in Russia was an influence, and Balanchine loved uh, Petipa, and that was his formation, what formed his as a choreographer, as a teacher, and he, you know, even used some of Petipa's steps when he started. That was a guiding force. But then he went off to doing all these um, neoclassic works and what we know is contemporary dance. Without a George Balanchine, we wouldn't have contemporary ballet today. It would be something far other. The influences, he influenced thousands of dancers, thousands, but not only dancers, choreographers in the, all around the world. Mm -hmm. It was startling. And I, I remember in 1962, when I was 20 years old, I had toured the world with the New York City Ballet, but the most special place, I think, in my life was going back to where Balanchine started, at the, his, the Marinsky. And where all my teachers at SAB came, many of them came from, Madame Dubrovska, Pierre Vladimirov, Anton Obukov, they started their careers in the Marinsky. And, the, and to go back with George Balanchine and to see his works, you know, it was like nothing. They had had, never had ballets. I think there was Joffrey, I think, was the first ballet company that went. And we went as an exchange system, and we were there during the Cuban Missile Crisis, if you can imagine. We were getting daily, break, uh, daily briefings from the State Department, and the audiences were revelatory. They were uh, extraordinary audiences. The applause was amazing. All during the, the, the you know, the um, Cuban Missile Crisis in 19, which was averted. <laughs> but to see the homeland of where ba Mr. Balanchine came mm -hmm. was so, and my teachers, and to be rehearsing in the studios that Balanchine came from was extraordinary. And um, that was such a highlight, and I just, I could cry just thinking about it. And then we went back later with Jean-Pierre and I when we were together in 72, where it was so different. You know, in 62, we were followed around, and it was amazing. Uh, the, the ballets, they had never experienced something like Agon. I mean, it was, it was groundbreaking. They had never seen the repertoire that he had done. And um, Jerome Robbins, I remember doing his interplay, and Serenade went a boss. It was Symphony and C, doing that on, and we had in our country, in our country in America, we did not have the arts complexes that we have now. It was before Lincoln Center was built, before Kennedy Center, before all these magnificent places where ballet and opera can be presented. So we would do little theaters, we would do even movie theaters and, uh, you know, but we had not been on rake stages, which is, you know, it has a rake stage that this, the stage is not flat. It's, and different stages. So uh, the Marinsky, you know, it was huge, it was bigger and, but Balanchine always, he made such extraordinary ballets on the city center stage, which was where I was five years at city center on a very tiny, smaller than the studio here. And he did, the vision of him was thinking that one day he will have a big stage like the Marinsky was, or the Paris Opera stage was. And the ballets, to think of the master works that he's done, and now they look so magnificent on these large stages, but to dance there was so amazing. That's the most wonderful thing, is for our students to watch the dancers of the Charlotte Ballet. And some of the apprentices get to, get to take class with the Charlotte Ballet. That's how they grow. And they come and they watch, because Charlotte Ballet performs over the summer. So we have had, a, you know, they experience professional dancers. But sometimes they don't get a chance to do. Some of the students have said to me, they get a feeling for 
what it's like to be a professional dancer because they are interacting with professional yes, dancers and it's not true. students. And that to them uh, is very important because it reconfirms that they in fact That's do right. want to become professional dancers. That's absolutely right. And they had an opportunity to, to understand somewhat what a life is like as a professional dancer. That's right. And there, our dancers are so dear and sweet and kind and um, they, it's not like you see in the movies. If you see how dancing, you know, the director is <clears throat> strong and impulsive, you know, uh, difficult and demanding, and and the, the dancers are not nice to one another. They're jealousies. It's totally the opposite. Our dancers are kind and helpful. They talk to the dancers. They're not snobbish. And they're, ex I mean, our dancers are beautiful people as well as extraordinary, beautiful dancers. And the camaraderie of Chautauqua is like no other place. Uh, there's not that, I mean, I, I think the feeling of Chautauqua, our dancers love coming here. Uh, it's a beautiful, interesting, you know, the pace is, there's a lot of work and we, we get ballets together so quickly and then they have to go out. New works are created here in Chautauqua. It's a well, wonderful, you know, nurturing. One of the reasons why Chautauqua dance um, and the school of dance are so extraordinary. And well, it's Jean Pierre. It's it, really it, it Jean Pierre. So and it's that it is from here. Your passion, your love, your amazing, extraordinary talent, and your caring for the students. It's, it's well, it's, it's genuine. It, it, it's genuine. It gives me so much. I get inspiration, like I always get inspiration by watching our beautiful dancers. And uh, so it's, dance has come a long way here, and I am hope for the future it will just go. And Continue to blossom and grow. Blossom. And, and thank you. And thrive. Thank you for all you've done. I wish many the future. When I'm not here anymore, I hope it will still be here yes. for years, 100 years to come. I'm sure it will be. Thank you. Thank you.